All right. Here we do. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do this. Let's go live. Let's go live. Here we go. How's it going, everybody? My name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. I am William Wallace. <laughs> As Crazy Mel would say. Here we go. All right. Check it out. I'm gonna paint a a uh, what do they call this? This a crow? Yeah. I went out drinking yesterday. I don't drink, but I, I went to a, a, what do you call it? A wedding. I went to a wedding. And I was like, yeah, drinking. I had two drinks and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. So, feeling excited guys, my excitement hasn't gone away. I got a new warehouse, a new art studio. It's gonna be super awesome. I'm going to um, record the whole process, that way you guys can see how awesome it is. That way you guys can uh, can see my process from uh, moving, setting up, and the whole thing. It's going to be super awesome. It's going to be super cool. Uh, by the way, the, the, the classes, the painting classes are almost ready. And those of you waiting for the... For the... The thing that I, I, I promise you, the, the guide, the artist guide, the thing of the thing, the artist guide for, for uh, selling on Craigslist, that's almost up. Almost, almost. I will make a video as soon as it's up and ready to purchase. Some people want me to do a video on on uh, reductive painting, which is what I'm doing right now. Or negative space painting. Some people call it that. It's when you go and hit the background last. You can do the background first, but if you're doing a la prima, which is what I'm doing right now, which is painting in one shot, right? I'm not coming back to this painting. This painting is going to be over right now. Uh, then, then you do the background last. If you are doing uh, maybe a oil painting, letting it set, and then coming back to it, then either way, you're gonna have to do the background last if you're doing if you're doing reductive painting. Thank you so much, Chris Oliver. How's it going, Tams? How's it going, Mike? A lot timer or Latimer? I don't know. I'm sorry if I mispronounced the names, guys. So check it out. And then... So, re reductive or, or, or negative space painting is really interesting because it really has to do... This is... It, it really starts showing your style. And, and the more you practice, of course, the better. It really starts showing your style because you'll eat part of the painting. And how much you eat and how you eat it, right? Uh, this is eating it, right? Look, I'm going around it just enough so that I can touch it. But in oil, in any, in any painting, especially when you're doing loose brush, this kind of stuff, uh, it really stands out. It really stands out, especially when it's, when it's loose brush. It really stands out because uh, the looser it is, the, the more wet, right? Wet on wet, as in this case. 
I know I'm throwing some, 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 uh, what do you call them? Some cool names. Latimer. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you make it look so simple, says, uh, era antiques. You're giving us the bird. <laughs> totally. <laughs> It is, it is simple, it is simple, it's just going to be a matter of a little bit of practice uh, and just enthusiasm guys, enthusiasm and I'm going to, I'm going to prepare a class because I'm, I'm preparing different classes by the way, those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm opening my, my painting academy online because so many people have been asking me, guys, I don't, I, I I wasn't into this until I, I, I started getting a lot of people asking me. I wasn't into teaching how to paint. I, that's, not, that's not what I do. I don't, I don't make a living that way. I sell paintings. I'm a painter who has a studio. Who's, who's, I'm very busy. <laughs> but somehow I got into that too. And I think some people are going to like it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Some people are going to like it. Uh, learning the whole painting process of how I do it, right? There's many ways of doing it, but how I do it. There's a, there's a, there's a distinct way that I learned how to do things. And it's a mixture of, of push and pull. I know it's, I know it's, I've, I've talked about this in many other, many other times, but, but the thing is that you, you have to go slow, but keep moving. And it's like a river. Okay. It's like a river guys. You know how some people like show photos of rivers and the, the water looks like it's coming the next Bob Ross. I love that. The water looks like it's coming very slow. But if you don't get out of your car soon enough, like it's here already, right? That's real speed. Real speed looks slow. It looks very slow, but it's not. And, and in painting, that's how I like to do it. I, I like to create speed. But it's in, a, it's in a slow way. It's like, okay, one after the other, you know? And it's, it's a very... See, if, if you start thinking about all the details, you can't do it. If you start thinking about the details, where's the eye? Where, why are the feet not touching, you know, the ground? Where is the ground? Where is the... You start thinking about all of that, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're going you're gonna to do something else. I don't know. Uh, realism or some other stuff. This is... This is on the borderline of expressionism, a little bit of impressionist type of brushwork and, and representational. We know it's a bird. Uh, I like to think it's, it's sort of like a crow, but you know, whatever. Uh, and the colors are very fauvist, right? Very bright, very, very lit colors. Fauvism. Uh, so that's, that's what I like to do. And I don't give all the information because I, I've been painting for over 20 years, guys. Giving all the information in a painting for me is suicide. You know, it's the kiss of death. You can't, you, you cannot give all the information. If you give all the, all the information, then, then the painting is about something else. Right? For example, hyperrealism. Dali used to give a lot of information in the subject, in, in the object, but not the subject. Right? So the, here's a, an example. Dali used to give you a lot of information on a portrait. You could see the portrait, but you didn't understand what the subject was about, right? So he left information out of the subject. So he was, he was still leaving information out, even though he painted hyper-realism. In the paintings that I do, the object itself, and many times the subject, I leave information out. Why? Because I don't need to put all the information. You, you as, a, as a viewer, uh, you're receiving information and you're putting it together. The mind is, the, 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 your senses, not just with your mind, but with your entire senses, you, you are you're putting it together, you know? And, and, and it's molding to your personal experience. It's your experience. So when you see this bird, you're not going to think the same thing that I do. You're going to, you're going to receive it through your personal lens. And you're going to put it together through your personal lens. Even though I painted it, you're going to put it together in your personal lens. And, and, and you're going to feel in the spots. Whatever you need. And you're going to discard some other ones. 
right? You may discard the, the background. You may discard the the, the, the the bird itself. Maybe you're taking it as a whole. And on and on and on. This is one of the reasons I like to do that. Let me show you a little portrait that I did earlier. A person with an umbrella. This I did earlier. And it's the same thing. Right? Live inform I leave information out. If I put the whole information in there, uh, it's, it's not fair to the viewer. It's not fair for me as an artist, and it's not fair to the viewer. I think the viewer needs to uh, receive the painting and not, be, not have all the information there. See, when you, go to, when you read a book or you go to a movie or whatever, they don't tell you every single detail. Not everything has to be naturalist. They don't tell you every single detail. Well, some books do. But even if they put a lot of information, they are going to leave information out. Because the, 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 the point of the book is the story or, or many times what you learn from the story. It, it's not the details of it. Right? So even if they do it very realistic or naturalistic, naturalistic writers, uh, they still leave information out. They leave gaps. Just like in music, not everything is sound. Right? The best music has, has gaps of silent, silence. Right? Spots of silence. You can, you can see that a lot, especially in classical music. Some of the best composed pieces have moments of silence. The violin can be playing all the time. There's, 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 there's missing information. But something else has to fill it in. And many times what fills it in is our own experiences, our own personal juices. And I think not sometimes for the most part. I think that's how we relate to music. That's how we relate to music. That's how we relate to art. We receive information differently. And I think that's what makes it special. It makes it special because I'm linking this to me, to my lens. The bird means something to me different than it means to you. And, it, and it's going to mean something different than it means to the person, you know, I don't know, acquiring it, the person collecting it. It's going to mean a whole other thing. That's the beauty of humanity. We are so diverse, and yet we are the same, right? But we see things in a different lens. It makes it special that way. Experience makes every, all the difference. Our personal life experience. So let me give you guys a close up. My name is Jose Trujillo. I am an artist. I am actually the world's greatest living artist. <laughs> yeah. And uh, welcome to my studio. Thank you so much. And I will show you guys some more awesome stuff later. All right. Take care. See you soon.